you decided this was the moment yeah. to talk publicly mm. about being gay. Mm. Why now? Um, if I look back, um, I first met my first partner when I was 21 years of age uh, and was in a relationship for 19 years and then met somebody else uh, and fell in love with them uh, on seven years. So it's one of these situations that to, to friends and family, I was out. It, was one of these, oh, it took me a long time to tell my mum, well, a couple of years anyway. Um, so to friends and family, I was out. It's just that when I went to work, which was swimming, I, was, I sort of lived in Cambridge and I went to Bath during the week. Friends there and all my swimming colleagues, no one knew. Uh, and I went home at the weekends. I'd sort of say, I'm going back home to see mum or going to go and see friends for the weekend. I never shared it. I completely was Mark the swimmer there and then Mark the real person Why when I came that? home. Did you feel that it wouldn't be accepted in uh, the swimming pool? Or? Yeah, well, I think it's one of these situations that, I mean, sport's an interesting one anyway, but I think going back to when I was a kid, I grew up with not, being gay was wrong. Or, you know, typically you should meet a woman, get married, have kids, get a house, and that's the way it worked, in a sense. And that's what you get taught. Uh, and mm -hmm. I suppose for me, when I did meet someone, I started having feelings towards men. I was kind of going, well, that's wrong. You shouldn't be feel having these feelings. Uh, and I had girlfriends as well when I was younger. Uh, I just kind of knew what I preferred. So mm -hmm. it was... But I just got so used to sort of tucking things away and hiding stuff away. So, so is it thing... one of those things where you started down that road and then almost found yourself you get so kind used of living a lie, yeah. really? Yeah, you get so used to not sharing your full self with people because you're, you're going to be vulnerable and you're afraid of what people might think and you're potentially afraid of what, uh, what the outcome might be regarding work or other bits and pieces. So I suppose the thing is, I got used to being Mark the swimmer that stands on the block, trains really hard, having to break world records and win world championships, but I wonder, I never won the Olympics, and I'm not saying had I been myself, I would have won the Olympics, but you just don't know, because I was always... The suppression. Was I afraid of being in the limelight a little bit more? Because it was a bit like, oh, hang on, if you step into the limelight, people will see a little bit more of you. But the what now bit is, um, and a bit of a difficult year. Dad died in June, and there were so many sort Sorry. of bits and pieces whereby I never talked about lots of stuff with him. Mm. Uh, he obviously knew, yeah. uh, and knew my partners, but I never, there were so many things I went, oh, I wish to have asked that. I knew, you know, when, when mum and dad split up, what was it like for him? Did he want to see it? I don't know, these little questions that were unanswered. Mm. Uh, and for me, that happened. Uh, end of last year was quite a difficult time. I split from my mm. partner and had a break, and all these things were going on, and I just thought, hang on, I need to have a chat with somebody, that things that you... And I think it's the thing for me around... This is, this is what this is about for Movember, was about... It's all about mental health, and it's not just for men, it's for women as well. And when you look at statistically, I think 6,000 people take their lives each year through, through suicide, and I'm not saying all of them are gay, but some of them will be, and, but a lot of, a lot of people, are, they struggle with difficulties. Mm -hmm. So, for me, by sitting down and discussing with someone my deepest inner secrets. You went, you went to therapy, you know? Yeah, yeah. and I just mm -hmm. sat down with, with this guy and he was very, very good and I and it is a really nice person. And I, and I just chatted things through. And I think it's one of these things that I suddenly went... I felt a weight coming off slowly and over this period of time. That's why... And it's, like I say, for all intents and purposes, my private life, my friends and family has always been... They've always known. But then, over the Olympic Games with, with Rebecca Adlington, last year there was a sensationalism that me and her were having. That was your moment. That was your moment. That was the that was the time because I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah. I, I've known for years. It was always a, a, among the media. It was mm. like, well, Mark Foster's gay, and we didn't really kind of know why you just wouldn't say so. Mm. Well, and we were all that, waiting. I, I suppose for... one of these situations where you don't want to be pushed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. And, and as you say, you kind of knew, and I suppose. Because word of mouth, you know, I've got one or two people within the industry that obviously know me, and I, I, I don't hide it away from anybody in the sense of when they're in, in behind closed doors, so to speak. But and then that word of mouth gets around. But for all intents and purposes, with the media, when it came around Becky Adlington, it was this whole, well, is he gay? On well, it wasn't is he gay? It's the Becky Adlington and Mark having a fling. And as you say, well, people know. Well, yeah. why, why print that then? You know, on one level, you could argue it's your private life. True. For goodness sake, you can keep it to yourself. Mm. Why should you feel under pressure to reveal it? But I suppose the flip side of that is, I know you've spoken about that there, that actually the pressure for sports people to conform, I guess if you had come out as gay while you were competing, maybe it would have released some of the pressure on other people mm. um, uh, uh, who were also perhaps feeling trapped within 
that sort true. Of and I think I, I mean, it's that, that old scenario, isn't it? Sort of strength in numbers, so to speak, because all of That's a sudden, a huge all that person yeah. on by yourself. Then, yeah. then it becomes more accessible. I mean, sorry, yeah. it, more acceptable in a sense. But I do. I, I, I remember having thoughts early doors that. Of course, when I was away on the team, I represented Britain for, at senior level for 23 years. Yeah. And I shared with a lot of people over that time, a lot of them really, really good mates. But I still never shared that part, because I was like, well, well, they want to share a room with me. I didn't fancy them or anything, but it's like, well, will they share a room with me? Will they think they're different? Will people sort yeah. of see you different? I don't know. And, and, you, and you start processing that in the back of your mind, and you go, oh, OK, we'll just, yeah, just leave that down there and, and, and you know, don't mm. talk about it. And I think I came on here in May, it was, and it was all around. We did the full Monty, which is all yeah. doing, mm. taking our clothes off. And ba but which, what we're basically trying to do is get men to talk about their issues. And this is men or women. And it was mm. all to do with, you know, men are very good at not talking about the problems they might have, whether it be prostate, testicular, or just basically not get themselves checked out. So I suppose my message really is, and the why now piece is, because I think that guys should seek help if they think they need it. Because I think mm. a lot of the time it, it, it would stop people going that extra step. And to help for your mental mm. health as well as Absolutely, physical mental health. and physical health. So, yeah. And everything I've done is around sort of wellbeing. What so. reaction have you had? It's been brilliant. Good. Yeah. yeah.